Hello everyone, this is Amrit Pal Singh. I'm here to present my first video on Apache Flume. This will be the introductory video in which I'll be discussing what is Apache Flume, its introduction, its architecture, and I'll be just comparing it with the Apache Kafka. Let's start. The first question which comes to our mind when we actually see this term Apache Flume is what's the need of Apache Flume? Why we have to learn it? Why we have to make use of it, right? In this case, I'm just comparing it with the Apache Scoop. The reason I'm comparing because I've already have posted some of the videos on Apache Scoop, right? And we can easily compare it with the Apache Flume. That's the reason I'm taking this as example. Look, Apache Scoop is a one tool, right? We got in under the Apache uh, Hadoop ecosystem, which is used to extract structured data from any RDBMS and push that data into SDFS, right? Now the question is how we can get unstructured data into SDFS because most of the data is unstructured, right? So the answer is Apache Flume. Let me take one more example. Let's suppose we have a company, right? Which has multiple services that are running on multiple servers and it is producing a lot of data, a lot of logs. In order to gain insights and understand the behavior of the clients or end users, we need to analyze these logs altogether. For that purpose, we need a tool to get this log, first of all, ingested into our SDFS. In that case, Apache Flume will be helping me, right? This is the scenario, or this is the need of Apache Flume that to get the data first ingested. Then later on, we can do some analysis on it, right? This is the need of Apache Flume. Now, this is the more formal definition of Apache Flume, right? It's open source. Obviously, we know that uh, like um, it's, uh, we don't have to pay for this. It's open source, powerful, reliable, we can rely on it and flexible system used to collect, aggregate from multiple sources and move that large amount of unstructured data from multiple data sources, which can be web logs, which can be like a social media data into our SDFS or HBase, for example, right? So this is a more appropriate or more formal definition. Like it's a tool through which we'll be getting our data ingested into the SDFS. Okay, let's move to next point. Let's talk about architecture. Guys, if we talk about the architecture of Apache Flume, you can see that we have a few components which make up this architecture. We have agent, which is further consist of, consisting of source, channel, sync, and you can see that on extreme left and right side, we have a web, web server and SDFS. So if we talk about the main, main thing here, which is called agent. So what is agent? Actually, if we just define the Flume agent, it's an independent JVM process, Java Virtual Machine process in Apache Flume. An agent is the one which will be receiving events from a clients or other Flume agents and pass it to the next destination. And it can be maybe sync and it can be other agents. So I'll be defining these words as well. Okay, so in a very crux or in a very summarized way, we can say it's an independent JVM process which is further consisting of three things, source, channel, sync. Let's discuss about these three things in detail. First thing is, before discussing these three things, we have a one, one term or one keyword, which is called event. So why this word is so important to us? Because it's a basic unit of data transported inside Flume. What's the meaning? Let's suppose if we talk about OSI model, in every layer we have some PDUs available. Right, we have given some names. Like in the case of network layer, we have a package, right? Uh, like in the case of the uh, physical layer, we have a bits. In the case of data link layer, we have the uh, frames. Similarly, we have given some basic unit of data in a case of Apache Flume, which is called event, similar to the PDUs in the OSI. So it's a basic uh, unit of data, which is transported inside Flume. Now let's talk about the first component of the agent, which is called source. So what is source? As the name suggests, it's a component which extracts the unstructured data, which we call as event, right? I've already have specified that the basic unit of data that I'll be using or I'll be like uh, transporting inside Flume will be called as event. That's why I've used the term AKA, also known as events, from one or more applications or clients. Right? So it's the component which will be extracting the data from one or more applications, which can be like maybe Twitter's data, 
which can be web server logs, right? So it is my source which will be interacting with the applications. After we getting a data through the source, what is the next point? Next point will be the channel. So what is channel? Channel is a buffer between source and sync. And guys, we have a three things available. We have a source, we have a channel, we have a sync, right? Which consists, which actually making up a one agent. So it is a kind of a buffer, some space between source and sync. Why we need a buffer, right? Because let's suppose if I talk about Twitter, the data which is coming from Twitter is actually is coming at very rapid rate, right? I, I, need, I need to store somewhere for, a, for, for some moment, right? That's why we need some buffer, right? So that's the reason we require some channel. It's a kind of a bridge between source and sync, okay? This is called buffer. So buffer properties are, it can be based upon type of channel used. Guys, in the upcoming videos, we'll be talking about it's a different type of channels that we can use, right? It can be memory channel, it can be file channel, it can be JDBC channel. Java database connectivity, right? So it's a nothing but a buffer, which we require just to hold data for a moment, okay? Then we can transport it to the sync. It's a buffer. Next point is sync. So what is sync? Sync is the last moment or last point of interaction. It's a final dump of data extracted. It means it is the one which is now connected to the SDFS. This is that point which is, the, which is actually interacting with the SDFS. That's why we have specified it's a final dump of data extracted or a destination of a source event. Typically we use SDFS here, but other options can be HBase, Hive, Elasticsearch and many more. So that's why in the diagram itself, it was, it was clearly mentioned that from a web server, like it is first, first we are interacting with the source, then we have a channel, then we have a sync and then ultimately we are dumping the data into the SDFS, right? So it's the one which is interacting with the SDFS. This is called sync. Now last point before ending this video, let's compare it with the Kafka because like generally speaking, like, uh, uh, like both things actually do the similar kind of stuff, right? That's why we can easily compare it with the, it with the Kafka. First difference, if we just talk about the Flume and Kafka is, we use Kafka when we require some messaging system. Like I've already have a different playlist uh, available for Kafka. If you want to learn, if you want to learn, you can simply uh, go to that playlist. Or if you are already aware of the Kafka, you know that the, we can use Kafka when we require some messaging system to send messages to the multiple channels, right? But we use Flume when we require data ingestion. Right. Second thing is, actually, if we talk about the Kafka, it's nothing but a kind of a pull model. Okay. Because customers or consumers pull data. Right. But if we talk about the Flume, it's a push model. The, because messages are pushed to the consumer by Flume. This is the second difference we can take. Right. Push or pull. The Kafka is a pull model and uh, Flume is following the push model. Third point when to use what? Guys, Flume's main use case is to ingest data into Hadoop because we all know that, that it is tightly integrated with the Hadoop's monitoring system, right? But if we talk about the Kafka, its main use case is to, is a distributed publish subscribe messaging system. It is also known as publish subscribe messaging system, Kafka, right? So, most of the development effort is involved with the allowing subscribers to read exactly the messages they are interested in. So it is the use case of Apache Kafka. So I guess uh, like you must have got some information that how we can compare Flume with the Kafka, right? So this is all about this video. So the purpose of this video is to just introduce the word, what is Apache Flume, its basic components, and how we can compare it with the Apache Kafka. I hope you must have got some information or some knowledge from this video. In case if you feel that something is not clear or maybe you got some confusion or you got some issues with my whatever the text or whatever the words I've used in my video, kindly comment on my video and let me know. Thanks for watching.